Yes, welcome kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the continent and to those who are in the diaspora. Uh, today I brought you uh, the speech from the uh, candidate of the African Union Commission Chair, Mr. Laila Odinga uh, from Germany. Uh, and listen to this uh, speech, then I will share also the speech from the Foreign Minister of South Africa uh, when addressing a diaspora in the United States of America. Let us first listen from uh, Mr. Laila Odinga. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to the age if, if I'm lucky to be uh, employed, to go and work for Africa to work for Africa, to ensure that we can be able to um, uh, create a new environment for Africa to grow. First, we want to uh, promote inter-African trade, because Africans are spending too much time looking for markets for their goods, and they're being sometimes offered very unequal terms. But yet there's a market in Africa that they can use to market those goods. Yes. Second, we don't want Africa to remain just a supplier of raw materials for the industrial rest. We want to have value addition taking place within Africa itself so that we can create, to create employment for our people uh, in, 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 uh, in Africa. Africa is the richest continent in the planet Earth. In terms of raw materials, all the industrial raw materials that you use in these countries, most of them come from Africa. Africa was the origin of, of iron and steel manufacturing. The first, I mean, the first mankind to use iron tools was in Africa. Africa made iron before the Europeans. The Europeans are still in the stone age. Africans were already using iron at that time. So Africa can actually claim its position uh, in, on, on the on planet Earth. It's a paradox that the richest in resources is also the poorest in terms of living conditions of its people. So we must change this. So in the African trade, the other one is the issue of climate change. Climate change is a major challenge. You can see how the Africans live now, between drought and floods. That's how we live now in Kenya. Mafuriko, Pandengine, Okami, Nanjai, Yote, Nakuja, Nanjai, Yote. The Africa itself is not the offender. The offense is coming from here. You guys are fortunate to have come here well now, they are cleaning the environment a little. But I need to live here in Europe, in Germany. If you wash your clothes and hang it there in the window, it's a white cloth, tomorrow it will be brown. Because the air was all <laughs> polluted with, and that's a waste. So this place is all burning, you know, uh, uh, coal and uh, diesel and so on and so forth. So the people who have actually polluted the environment are here. But Africa is a victim. And Africa therefore needs to get proper compensation for what it's doing. Because we also have one of the biggest carbon sinks in the world that helps remove carbon from the environment. That is another issue that we want to, to, to deal with when we go there. The issues of health, the issues of security, the issues of education, and so on and so forth. So this is why I say that let me take leave for away from Kenyan politics in the financial of Africa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now let me finish by, you know, when I was down here, we used to, to as students, we used to meet, 
Sometimes we used to go around and celebrate and so on and so forth. Yes, now let us listen uh, from the Foreign Minister of South Africa. Uh, then we come back uh, with Mr. Odinga again. South Africa's historic relations with the U.S. are based on strong economic and political people-to-people -people ties. We share a common struggle for economic and racial justice, born out of experiences with segregation and apartheid. The ties of solidarity and the bonds of friendships that were forged between the civil rights and apartheid movements during those difficult times are enduring and should be revived as we are continuing the fight for a struggle to eliminate poverty, address high level of unemployment and inequality, and for economic inclusion and short growth. The struggle you fought for, for our country against apartheid continues. Injustice, racial segregation, inequality, and in our country's more pronounced inequality based on race. And um, reading from the US, you also have such similarities where race also determines the future of the child and the future of a particular grouping. We believe this should not be the case. It should be determined by the ability of your skill and what you have been given by God. Like, like in any bilateral relations, we have differences of opinions or approach with the U.S. when it comes to certain issues. However, such differences should not always be managed based on mutual respect and willingness to engage in constructive dialogue to achieve mutual understanding. It should not be based on threats. It should be based on mutual respect because we believe our relationship with the U.S. is mutually beneficial. We benefit from the relationship that we have with the United States of America, and we value this relationship. And we also believe that the United States of America also benefit from the relationship they have with us, economically and also people to people. It's a relationship that must be preserved. When there are differences, let's engage, let's find each other, but we must accept that in certain differences, we may agree to disagree. But we believe that if we stick with principle, guided by the UN Charter, by the various platforms of multilateral relations, we will be able to chart the way forward, even bilaterally, with the United States of America. The US is South Africa's third biggest trade and investment partner and a significant contributor to the development assistance. We appreciate the decades and long support for Africa's priorities, including through PEPFA and AGOA, that have been very impactful and well received by the people of the continent. Similarly, we will also want to see value add by investors from the US in our country. Not only a relationship of extraction of minerals, but value add in our continent, helping us with industrialization, with manufacturing, with modernizing and leapfrogging our country into a new modern society. <laughs> this, in our view, will be a mutual beneficial relationship that must continue to be strengthened and be worked upon. And this also relates to a various issues in relation to geopolitical matters, that such should also be handled at a mutual, respectful relationship. And we will continue to engage with this country on the basis of that mutual respect. I thank you very much for allowing me to participate here. Thank you very much. Yes, kings and queens, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome back to our uh, today's conversation, of course, it is just like lecture, but it is not a lecture, it is just conversation. We are here to think beyond and to think different, uh, to contribute to what we have, uh, what we think about our beautiful continent, Africa. As you heard from Mr. Laila Odinga, uh, also from the Foreign Minister of South Africa, it looks like we are uh, looking for others 
instead of looking inside. We don't have African integration. So if you want to do businesses, we are looking outside, we are looking in Europe, China, Russia, America, or elsewhere, but we are not looking Africa first. So, um, but also I want to hug you, Mr. Laila. Uh, Mr. Laila has spoken very well, but he's spoken in German. Yes, we have Africans in German, but I wish also, because he's uh, a candidate of the African Union Chair, I need Mr. Laila to move along the continent of Africa, at least to, have, to share his views to, to his fellow African countries. Of course, I'm not a good sketcher. I'm trying to go. So I wish Mr. Laila, uh, of course, I have seen Mr. Laila in China uh, last month, China, when African leaders attended the Africa. China Africa Summit, and now I see him in Germany. So I wish to see instead of going out there, uh, let us move to uh, maybe to Rwanda, Congo, both Congo, Congo DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Congo Brazzaville, Congo Brazzaville, uh, to move around Swaziland, Tanzania. Uh, Uganda, to move in Mozambique, in West Africa, in Senegal, Gambia, uh, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea-Conakry, uh, in Mauritania, so that uh, he can address his concept uh, because he's going to be the chair uh, person of the African Union next year if God wishes, but we want a chairperson who uh, is leading African people instead of addressing people from China or from Germany. Uh, let us go to the issue of integration. As you heard that Africa, we have resources, we have minerals, uh, we have potentials in all sectors, but we lack integration. We need Africans to start thinking on how we can work together, how we can, you know, because of division, and that's why we don't have integration, you see? Um, sometimes people are saying that we don't have technologies. It's not true. I don't agree that Africa we don't have technologies. Africa we have technologies. What we are lacking is collaboration. That even those, you find some Africans who are working in America, America, or Europe, or Asia. These Africans are very te 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 technological. They know many things. But they are not working here in the continent of Africa. They are working in Europe, in America, or Asia. So to say that Africans, we don't have technology, that is not true. What we need is to work together. We need to integrate. So that instead of our people from Nigeria to go out there, to go to America, to go to Europe, to go to uh, China or elsewhere, outside of the continent, they must remain here in the continent of Africa. You know these borders are keeping Africans. You know, for instance, now we are talking about the issue of DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, where there are huge minerals here, rich in terms of natural resources. But we have Africans who are working in Western companies processing DRC's minerals. You see, these resources are taken away, not only DRC, I'm taking DRC as an example. Many countries, whether in Mali, Burkina Faso, or Sudan, South Sudan, these resources are going out, but you find Africans in those industries are those who are working, processing these resources. Why don't we work together so that our brothers and sisters don't run away from this continent to go to work in Europe and America, where they are working and they are dealing with the same materials found here in the continent of Africa, instead of allowing them to work here in the continent of Africa. So that's why we're insisting integration. If we are insisting integration, we are collapsing these borders. It means uh, the people who are in Nigeria can come and have access of resources in South Africa. And I've seen this xenophobic attack, xenophobic activities. You see, for instance, those who are in South Africa, black South Africans, not all, some of them, they think that maybe Nigerians who are coming to work in South Africa they are coming to take their jobs, 
the Zimbabweans who are coming to this area, they're coming to take their jobs. But ask yourself, who owned the land in South Africa? It's white people. So sometimes uh, these divisions and these what we call uh, borders have been keeping us into a narrow mind to think in small areas that all oh, these people are coming here to take our jobs. Why don't you go out and take the, the jobs here? You see? Why don't you go out and work in Nigeria? So these people are finding opportunity. And sometimes if we restricting these people, Nigerians from entering South Africa, Zimbabwean from South Africa, I don't mean that I'm saying you have to allow them to enter to take your jobs because um, sometimes we confuse things. But what I want to say is that um, if we don't allow our Africans to move around this continent to find opportunities, it means Africans will run away from this continent. You see? That's why you see young people running away from this continent because we don't have this African integration and we don't see each other as brothers and sisters. We must have respecting ourselves. We, we cannot have development. I'm telling you the truth. We will not attain development until we decide to come together. You see the countries such as Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, they have decided to come together to form their federation, the Alliance of Sahel State. Not because uh, they want to maybe to make some people happy. No, they know that in order for them to achieve, whether to achieve a security, to achieve economic development and prosperity, they need to come together. And that's what the United States of America is doing. And that's what Europe is you doing the European Union is doing, you see, and what is the good lesson from European Union? You find that European Union is signing agreement with single countries in Africa. Have you heard that African Union has signed agreement with uh, European Union or, you, or maybe with Italy? What they did is this European Union, because they're so united they come and sign agreement with a single country. So if you sign with Kenya, it means all European countries can have share in the project. If the project is going to be in Kenya, wherever in Swaziland, or in Namibia, any place in the continent, they use those tactics. So even Africans, for us to realize development, integration, we need to come together. We need to work together. So that's why I'm saying uh, that uh, integration among Africans is very, very, very important. It's very important for us to have development. Um, kings and queens, you heard a lot. Of course, I'm trying to share uh, my thoughts uh, from what Laila, the, the candidate in the chair, uh, the candidate of the African Union chair, um, said, and the Foreign Minister of South Africa said, but all in all, I'm just insisting that Africans or Africa, we need to integrate, we need to come together, we need to work together to use these resources that are found here. That's why you see Americans came together as the United States of America, come to Africa, do what they want to do. Europeans, they are doing the same. And this is a big lesson that every now and then I'm saying, Europeans, they came together for three month is 18, 84, I think it's December, to 1885, this is March, if it's not April. So four months, people sitting down, strategizing, thinking on how they can conquer Africa, socially, the region, you see, this, Four months is not a short time. It's a long time for people to sit in a room from morning to evening, morning to evening, four months. It is a long time. People sat down. Of course, this will be another lecture or another uh, topic for another day. I'll come and share this in order for we Africans to wake up and to change our mind. That when people want their issues, they sit down and they decide. So with those few words, 
few uh, thoughts I would like also for, to hear from you. Uh, share with us in the comment section what do you think? Uh, how are we going to achieve African integration? How are we going to achieve our developments? But all in all, share also this video to other Africans in the continent, in the diaspora. And don't forget also to subscribe if you're not subscribing. We are here to make the difference, to share our thoughts. Thank you. Who's an ambush? Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I lived in this country as a young person. I studied here. Therefore, I understand German culture and city very well. I know Witze, Deutsche Witze. So, um, but I'm coming here basically because you know that um, I'm running for the chairmanship of African Union. And uh, uh, that's why we, our trip here has coincided. But then I was also very happy to have the opportunity to see so many young people here living in Deutschland. Hmm? And uh, I know the kind of challenges that people face uh, in living here. See, when I, I arrived here, I was a very young boy. And it was in winter. <laughs> and uh, when we arrived, I saw the trees. I thought all these trees are dry because there are no leaves. I just thought that all these trees are just dead. Until spring came. But that was one of the coldest winter for the last 50 years. There has never been a winter like that one. And it lasted until May so that uh, institutions ran out of coal. Those days they were using coal at that time. They are not coming with the steam heating and now electric. So a number of institutions were closed uh, because of that. And we would, we would actually go and, and get uh, coal, it be packed and we'd take it in the oven, we light the oven so that we get uh, the room to be a bit warm and happy to go. Then uh, um, I met so many German friends at the time I was living here. And then uh, I went back. And then, but at that time, you know, Germany was divided east and west. And uh, but the good thing is that um, if you are Kenyan, you had no problem because he did not need a visa to go to West Germany. He did not need a visa to go to Britain. But he needed a visa to transit. Like when I was going to Britain from Germany, I had to get a Dutch transit visa and a Belgian transit visa. Because if you did not have it, at the border they would remove it from the train and put you back to another train, going back to where you came from. These days, you just need a Schengen visa. And you can travel across the whole of Europe. You see? This is what I'm saying. And this is a problem that we have in Africa. Because in Africa, we still have a lot of problems. Aliku Dangote was saying that for him to travel across Africa, he needs... 35 visas. But his French competitor does not need a visa to travel across Africa because he's got a French passport. But with a Nigerian passport, you need a visa to travel to any African country. A shame. This is a big shame. So, uh, but let me now get back to Kenya. In Kenya, we have. Um, what you call uh, a, demograph a demographic dividend. Because you have a large percentage of our population which are young. Uh, number 70 percent of our population are below the age of 35. So you have got a, a youth uh, dividend. But this thing here 
It can be either a blessing or a curse. The youth can be either a blessing or a curse. If you don't empower them through opportunities for education to acquire skills, they become basically failures. They become delinquents, drug addicts, criminals. So they are basically a burden on the society. But if you impart skills on these youths so that they are able to do work here and there, then they become a motive force for development. That's why we all the time laid a lot of emphasis on education. From ECD through primary to secondary to university education. So you are here and you are here and you are working because you got the education opportunity to, 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 to learn. But see, what we have in Africa again is lack of opportunities. Lack of opportunities to employ these youth. I mentioned the other day that it's a shame that currently we find African children drowning in the Mediterranean trying to reach Europe. It is them is a greener pastures. They are escaping poverty. Is keeping lack of employment back on the continent of Africa. This is a shame. We need to create a neighboring environment for these youth to be able to get employment in Africa. But that doesn't mean that it must only work for companies in Africa. That's why the reason why I'm very happy that we are talking about people living in Kenya and working for companies in Germany. And this agreement has just been signed here between us. That Kenyans can work for German corporations when they're living there in Kenya. Okay? And then, so, in other words, instead of uh, these people exporting labor to Africa, we're the ones who are now exporting labor where? Here. Because you see, Whereas we have a youth dominance, this is what got a youth deficit here. It's an ancient society. It's an ancient society. You have a situation where you've got an inverted pyramid. The base is up. The down here is it's, it's, it's now smaller. You've got a smaller population carrying the bigger population. The pensioners are more than the working population. Here in, in, in this course, Kwanini, Otai Kuza. Our Jimmy Kuza is crazy. Gene Wanaomi and Gene Wanaomi and Zao. I can remember the Villa of Otaki. When I can, I'm going to forget. <laughs> so uh, now uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that there are opportunities for our people. And that's why I'm so happy that the government has signed an agreement here with the government, the, the, the government of Germany, so that in, our people who are living here can live and work here properly without exploitation. This is very, very important. Because this is an agreement that is signed between the, this government and many other governments in Europe. In fact, the EU has got regulations about uh, mobility of labor and how this, uh, 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 those people migrating from one country to another country are to, to be treated. So this is what we want also to happen to our people, our Kenyan people. 
so that Kenyans who live out here feel protected and they cannot be exploited by anybody. So, uh,